All right, well, just like that, my work computer crashed in the middle of recording these videos, so I had to switch over to my personal computer, and for whatever reason, I'm not able to screen capture both my screen uh, and my camera at the same time, which is why my little floating head is no longer in the bottom corner of the screen. But hopefully for the last two videos, uh, just having my voice narrate these slides will be sufficient enough. Uh, so when we last left off, we were talking a little bit about uh, pros and cons of bureaucracies. And we talked a little bit about how red tape oftentimes uh, makes bureaucracy seem like they do more harm than good in our societies when there's kind of these uh, asinine or illogical hurdles that we require people to uh, kind of circumvent or overcome as part of these formal organizations that can actually make bureaucracy seem like they're more work uh, instead of being more efficient as they're supposed to do. Uh, now bureaucracies are supposed to be meritocracies and a meritocracy uh, means that hiring and promotion should be based on proven and documented skills so if someone advances in their position based off of their merit rather than on nepotism or random choice or favoritism, things like that. Um, however, is this how organizations and bureaucracies always work? Not necessarily. Of course, we know that as social beings, things like favoritism oftentimes play a role in, in positions and in hiring and promotions, even when favoritism is not supposed to play a certain role. As sociologists, we do lots of really interesting studies um, using kind of experimental designs to see how certain people get promoted in positions more likely than others or to see why people get hired for positions more likely than others. And what research consistently finds is that oftentimes being part of a marginalized group, uh, whether it's being a racial minority, being a woman, being a member of the LGBT plus community, etc., can have negative effects on your likelihood of being promoted or being hired in positions in the first place. Another good example of this is the recent college admission scandals where good old Aunt Becky from Full House, you know, uh, actually facing a felony for bribing certain colleges and universities to try and get her children to get admitted into them, right? So it's not always, uh, bureaucracies might have good intentions, they should be designed as meritocracies where, you know, the clear division of labor that's set up in the hierarchy of authority makes it really clear how a person is supposed to successfully advance or enter into this position and in this organization. It doesn't always work out that way, though, because, like as we said, human beings are subjective to individual choices. Sometimes we break the rules or bend the rules or find loopholes to get around these, these types of things. There's also a concept called the iron rule of oligarchy, which suggests that even in a democratic organization, an organization where everyone is supposed to be treated equally and everyone is supposed to have an equal voice and representation, eventually in these organizations, some people will break off, typically a small group of people will break off, coalesce or form a coalition, if you will, and try and take over and rule this organization. Um, a great classic example of this is if you remember the book Animal Farm, if you had to read that in high school, right? Basically, all the animals on the farm kind of revolt and they want to take over. And at start, at the at starting value, everyone was operating pretty democratically. It was a democratic organization. All the animals were pitching in and valued each other equally. But eventually, the pigs kind of broke off and decided to become leaders. And they eventually took over the group and became very authoritarian leaders right and uh, that democratic leadership position or democratic organization that was in place ended up becoming a pretty regular uh, regular regulatory bureau bureaucracy because of this iron rule of, or, of oligarchy another concept that sociologists have developed in their discussion and research on groups and organizations is this phenomenon that's referred to as the McDonaldization of society and yes, this does refer to the fast food chain McDonald's. So basically what this concept refers to uh, is when society, its institutions, and its organizations are adapted to have the same characteristics that are found in fast food chains. So if I asked you to think of the characteristics or the qualities you associate with fast food restaurants, what would you say? Well, you'd probably say things like they're efficient, they're calculated, they're predictable, 
and they are very controlled, right? If you go to a McDonald's here in South Texas and then you went to a McDonald's in Tokyo, Japan, you could have a fairly predictable experience, right? You would expect certain things. You'd expect to get your food efficiently within a small period of time. You know that there are always going to be, you know, the same number of pickles, the same number of ketchup and mustard on your hamburger that you order it. It's very predictable and calculated, and it's very controlled. It's going to cost the same here anywhere else in the world because all McDonald's are operating under the same corporation, right? So here's a quick video that kind of goes into more detail about what the McDonaldization of society is and how it's translated to other organizations beyond just fast food restaurants. In 1993, George Spritzer published his book titled The McDonaldization of Society. The term McDonaldization refers to the business model adopted by McDonald's in the fast food industry that focuses on the four main elements of efficiency, predictability, calculability, and control. These are said to be the most rational forms of running a business and operating within a capitalist system. With rationality, we replace traditional rules with logical and consistent ones. Let's take these four elements and apply them to your experience at a fast food restaurant. What is efficiency? You know you desire something to be efficient if you have ever complained at a fast food restaurant because your food was taking too long. Well, what is too long? One minute? Five minutes? With efficiency, we expect to order an item and have it available right away. Efficiency also puts more expectation on the customer to do things for themselves, such as get their own beverage or condiments. This is convenient for both the customer and the business. The second element is predictability. We love what is familiar. And just like the McDonald's where you live, you expect a McDonald's in another city or country to have either the same menu items and atmosphere or at least something close to it. Third is the idea of calculability. Let's face it, you don't go to McDonald's because you believe it is the best quality food. Well, why do you go? In addition to knowing what you will get and getting it quickly, you know you will get a lot of food for a small price. So in other words, we go for quantity over quality. Last, we have control. And primarily it's control through non-human technology. Technology ensures that our food is cooked and prepared the same way each time. This aids in de-skilling humans and turns them into employees that can be easily replaced. But McDonaldization is not just limited to the fast food industry. Today we see it everywhere from restaurants to baking systems to higher education. How have colleges and universities turned into places of McDonaldization? If you think about it, they focus on efficiency you take a multiple choice test on a computer, which automatically grades your test when you're done, and then enters it automatically into an online grade book, which you can then check any time, day or night. Predictability happens when we expect one professor to teach the same way and use similar teaching styles. Calculability shows up when what we produce in the classroom and what can be measured is the primary focus. You know this is true when what matters most to you is the grade you receive in the class or your GPA. Is this more important than the process of learning? Can all learning be quantifiable? And what about control? Standardized tests and an institution's rules and regulations on how and what is taught give a certain amount of control. And courses that are developed and packaged to be taught by any professor anywhere and outline exactly what needs to be done each class period have a great deal of control. All of these elements impact the type of education you receive. So, is McDonaldization a good thing for colleges and universities? How does it affect the way you learn? Is McDonaldization even good for society? And perhaps more important is how will this affect our future? So I'm going to pause it here because these are some good questions that you could take a moment to reflect on or possibly even incorporate into your weekly discussion post for this week. You know, this process of McDonaldization is really taking over every industry in society. You know, it started off in fast food restaurants and now as the video discussed, we're seeing it happening in education, right? Things like, especially now with this pandemic, as we're uh, being forced to transition a lot of our teaching and instruction online, 
you can start to see how education might become more McDonaldized. The less we start requiring on humans and human interactions to achieve the tasks that we are uh, have been familiar with completing through humans in the past and putting them online, you know, the need for humans becomes less and less important, you know. Uh, but like they mentioned in this video, you know, I have my quizzes on Blackboard designed so as soon as you complete your quiz, your grade gets automatically entered into the grade book so you can see what you get, what grade you got on the quiz immediately, right? Uh, before, you know, back in the good old days before all this technology existed, professors and teachers had to grade everything by hand, which obviously took a lot more time. But it did make us more meaningful workers, you know. They required us to have that position as teachers and professors because they needed someone to grade those papers. Now there's a computer technology that can do all that for us, right? So it begs the question, you know, down the road, are college professors going to become obsolete or at least in lower demand as more classes become readily available online and are already packaged like they said in the video? So, you know, hypothetically, you don't know if I'm recording this lecture right now, today, on September 26th of 2020, or if I recorded this lecture a year ago, and if I'm just reusing these same video lectures class in and class out, right? So it's really interesting to think about how McDonaldization can affect other industries beyond just fast food. You know, how does it affect our learning? Is it good for society? How will it affect our future? These are all questions that sociologists are interested in exploring and understanding because McDonaldization isn't going away, especially with the advances in technology that we see today. You know, everything is becoming more McDonaldized. Another great example are grocery stores, right, with self-checkout lanes, a fairly new convention, right? Before, you used to depend on the cashiers to individually check out your groceries that you purchased at, say, a Walmart or something. Um, and now, almost every grocery store has one of those self-checkouts where you can go in and check out your own groceries. It's presumably a lot quicker, right? You can have eight or seven of those self-checkout stations clustered and only one grocery store attendant to kind of supervise them to deal with any technical glitches or issues that come up. And so it's a lot more efficient in that method, right? It, it, produ it produces a greater risk of predictability. You know that you can get out of the grocery store in less time than in the past. And there's definitely calculability and control involved with those, right? Uh, it's not an individual looking up the barcode for every single piece of produce or every single package good that you got. It's a computer. You scan that barcode and the computer automatically associates the price with it. So it makes grocery shopping a lot quicker, right? So it's interesting to consider and to really sit back and think about where McDonaldization is in our society because you can really start to see aspects of this, these characteristics of efficiency, calculability, predictability, and control in a lot of different places if you think about it. So is McDonaldization good for society? I mean, it's a little bit of an ethical and philosophical question. A more sociological question to pose would be, you know, how does McDonaldization affect the way humans behave? How does McDonaldization uh, potentially positively impact society? How does it negatively impact society? And again, what are the implications for the future moving forward? How is it going to affect individuals if we become even more dependent on McDonaldizing all these different institutions and organizations? and what are the consequences for social life.